Ah, nothing like a good swim. Getting uh, some hydration in. But hey there, hey there, Pet Nation. It's so good to see you and you and you and see all your wet noses and smiling faces. And I wanted to, to, to start a new segment that I'm debating what it's gonna be called. I'm trying to figure out what type of segment to, um, to create here, but I, I was thinking about something, something very important about the term turfing. And I'm going to give you some pointers on that. And this is really geared towards those new associates or those associates faced with a dilemma of what to do at the end of the day when an emergent situation is, pro is proposed to you. Um, and some of it is some of the owner perspective that, that I'm bringing to the mix as well. So. Classic case, five minutes to close, the phone rings, and there is a, either it's a perceived emergency from the client's standpoint, or it truly is an emergent situation, or a semi-emergent situation, or an ambiguous, amb ambiguous situation going on there. Um, so sometimes it, we're, we're left with a situation of, of what to do with that situation, and, and what what many owners are concerned of is, is the term of turfing. And turfing is defined as just immediately through phone triage, sending that client to an emergency situation. I actually worked with someone who half hour before close, if any emergency came, they would say, by the time you get here, you can get to an emergency situation. It's irrelevant of what it was. Um, and I guess that stuck with me for a good 14 years um, about what, what we can do. But, but I get it, you know, you're, you're sitting here, um, we're always talking about work-life balance, we're talking about preventing burnout, many things that, you know, you don't want to deal with as a associate. You may work for a real, but you must be torn with what to do because in the end we're all in it to help treat the animals, satisfy customer service. Let me clarify that. The term turfing is something that you know a lot of a lot of owners aren't too thrilled about, and uh, and they have some concerns about that. And I think that with the economy downturn in the late 2000s, I think that there was a huge um, issue or concern with that. Right, 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 girl. Yeah, my dog's here. You don't want to turf, right? Um, but I get it, you know, um, we're dealing with a situation where you, you don't know what to do and I hope I can give you some thoughts about why turfing is, is something we can manage and why it's important from a client perspective. The, the best case are those that are easy um, and easy being it's a situation where you do the right thing, you, you make the decision to see the pet and really there's nothing going on or something minor, easy, quick fix, wham, bam, out the door, everything's good, call you, call you next day how everything's going, great. Really happy client, happy team, they're not staying late, happy you, you're not really staying that late, you get to go home, see your family, do whatever you need to do. The other one that makes it easy is where you've got clearly, it's an emergent situation on the phone, and when you look at where the client lives, where the closest referral center is, because we're talking about total emergent care or 24 hour care, it makes much more sense for the client to go there immediately than come see you, which inevitably you're going to be sending there as well. So the, the, the moment that, or the, the one that I'm talking about that's difficult, sorry, I'm a little parched here. The one that I'm talking that's difficult is the situation where it's ambiguous. You're not getting clear history. You've got this gut feeling that something be going on and or the client is insistent on seeing you. So I think something to, to think about is why the client wants to see you. So what's very important is the client is calling you for a reason. They're calling you because they trust you. And as my good friend, Dr. Garrett Packinger, the CFO of Vet Girl, we, we had a discussion about the concept of the emotional bank. So. As a practitioner, I've been in this business for a couple decades now. I've developed some relationships with clients. I've actually been through several generations of pets with some clients. So there's a huge emotional bank with them. And there's a huge level of trust. 
Um, I think anyone who does the right thing and does well by the pet and the client is gonna have this huge emotional bank as most clients or many clients go to an emergency center and they're meeting someone they don't know, they're being told something they don't really have any clue about and they're given a huge giant estimate about what it's going to take to, to deal with the situation and there's really little trust. And so um, guys like Garrett, they can develop great trust. Tr I trust them explicitly, um, implicitly I should say, explicitly, implicitly. Um, and, and we can move forward from there. And he's got a great personality and great communication skills, great veterinarian all around, you can assess the situation and go and move forward. But clients don't have this. So they're calling you for a reason that they trust you. So in those situations, you have to think about what is going through the client's mind. So you're sitting here and you go, okay, what do you do? And I, I think there's, there's, a, there's a solution that I came up with. It's called serve and turf. Not surf and turf, serve and turf. I love surf and turf, by the way. Serve and turf. And, and by that I mean serve the client needs, serve the medical interests of the pet, and then, if necessary, send them on to the referral center. And it's very successful. So um, it works in many wonderful ways. Um, the best first approach is to do what I call networking, and we'll talk about that later. Networking is huge. Um, and networking with the right people in referral is humongous. And you know who you are. Um, so um, those, that's, that's key. So networking is key. But you sit there and you assess the situation medically. So if it is a major medical condition but is somewhat stable so we can get to the point of stabilizing, we do what we can. And what I mean by that is you do the diagnostics you can, you get a catheter in, you can even start partial therapy, if not the initial therapy. During all that time, you're able to gather your thoughts, you're able to discuss with the client what's going on. You're also able to use your networking skills to reach out to the referral specialist or the referral center, have a great discussion, prime them, get the records there and get the client on their way. Uh, we had that this week where um, a great dog, Romeo came in and he was in cardiac failure. We managed to get our diagnostics of uh, ECG chest rads going, um, we put an IV catheter in, we you know placed them on oxygen, mostly stable. But during that time, we were able to talk to many specialists. Um, my great new associate had a great link to a cardiologist very close to us, and we were able to get Romeo there. And the first thing the specialist said to, to us when we called was thanking us so much for placing a catheter and actually starting the Lasix therapy, initial Lasix therapy. Um, I was informed that many situations, they're there and they have to get the catheter in, they have to assess and go from there. So I think that, that doing that serve component of the serve and turf is huge. Getting that pet to the point of transfer. Chronic renal failure, anything that, that you you feel, in my state, it, I am not able to um, hospitalize overnight unless I have a discussion with the client in which we talk about that no one is here overnight. And in all honesty, my protocol is that if the pet is stable, if it's a stable condition that we know that we, we don't have to worry about something going bad overnight, that, that's a discussion about hospitalization. Um, worst case scenario I've had is where there was a financial concern and, and overnight transfer was refused. Um, so those are the ones that are tough. But most, most cases, and in what I mean most cases, 98, 99% of the cases, um, I'm able to actually assess the situation, start diagnostics, start medical treatment, and then transfer the client out. And from a medical standpoint, I think as I said before, I think it's better. I think you've started the therapy, you then transfer everything over. I, I can't speak for emergency vets, but if you get a lot of the data and a lot of the diagnosis and you can look at things and add to that, I think it's, it's easier than assessing a situation from scratch, especially if everything's hitting the fan and you have to deal with one thing or another. Um, and from a customer service standpoint, the client is satisfied. You've done your duty by seeing that patient, assessing the situation with the client and giving them your best med medical recommendations because they trust you and they trust where you're gonna go. So I think that you can definitely 
have a good outcome of those ambiguous emergency medical conditions by doing the serve and turf method. Make sense? Makes sense to me. We'll talk about networking on another episode, but I think it, it's very important. So think about that. I think, I think you can be successful in a medical standpoint, you can be successful in a customer service standpoint, and you're not staying that late, but you're doing so much good and everyone will benefit for you. And from a business owner standpoint, doing that, I think it just, it, it's, it's wonderful because you've got that client who'll say, you know what, they did this for me and they're the ones who are gonna tell people and it's all good from a business standpoint. And it doesn't happen all the time. I, I hardly have that happening at my practice. And ironically, I close earlier than any practice around me, so I hardly have that happening. So I think it's good. I think it's good for your work-life balance. So remember everyone, love your pet like they love you unconditionally. Have a great night.